Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. I got a couple really good messages on Instagram and I want to reply to one of them today. I mean, you guys send me such amazing messages on Instagram all the time and this one particularly uh, sparked something in me and I would love to make an episode. So this is about um, how to deal with people who are spiritually asleep. Like the scenario here is you are waking up to the reality Uh, the spiritual reality of the structure of how we exist, all these timelines that we're all connected, we're all one split and fractaled out into many different souls, Um, choosing to have experiences here and choosing to forget so that when we, as we remember who we are, we can recreate ourselves and grow our consciousness and also enjoy having a 3D reality in these beautiful bodies that we have all been given and chosen. So what happens when you are, you know, remembering more and more and you're becoming more and more awake and the people around you, this could be close friends, people that you love, your partner, or just people that you associate with, like people at work or anyone that you're you're sharing your energy with and they are not awake. Like, how do you deal with that? And this particular person, she messaged me and she was like, I really... Like I really had a hard time waking up because um, as I woke up, my heart started to open and I could feel all of the pain that my boyfriend was feeling when we had just, bro- they, had j- they had just broken up. And she was like, my empathy, like my heart was so open and I was more awake to what was going on. And so I was like sensing more and more what was happening in the situation. And she said, I had so much gratitude for life and you know being here on this timeline being able to experience everything we're experiencing and also i was like a little bit overwhelmed by feeling i could feel how he she could feel what her ex-boyfriend was feeling and it was a lot of negative emotions and she was like what do i do how do i deal with this um and asking if i had any tips and this is something that i definitely have a lot of personal experience with because I am such a sensitive soul and I feel that my heart is very, ever since I was little, it's been very wide open. And so I went through a lot of situations where I didn't realize how much I was taking on um, energetically, emotionally for other people. Um, And just, I didn't know how to create like this protective bubble around me in order to be able to live in this world (laughs) where with a lot of people who are carrying a lot of negative beliefs which create a lot of negative feelings and energy and a lot of these people were people I really cared about like my my blood family and you know partners that I had in the past and I was just like how do I deal with this so I have learned some things and I'm happy to share these with you and I would love to hear your guys' feedback. You can always message me on Instagram at Brittany Bond. Um, so something that's really important to understand is that when you wake up, you are able to tune into the reality of not just your own reality of what you're experiencing, but as you wake up more and more, you can see through other people's realities and you can see, you can understand intellectually and you can also feel emotionally how it feels in their body and also what they're thinking. It's like, because we are all this one collective, you know, microcosm of beautiful humanity, um, we are all interconnected. And this is something that we just have to really own and be able to work with. And if someone tells you like, (laughs) that's not true or whatever, whatever, you're like, okay, but from your own experience, as you wake up more and more, you are definitely going to be feeling what other people feel and, you know, being able to sense what they're thinking. Um, So for people you care about, it can be rough because you can feel their pain, like I was saying. And two options that I I know that I went through in the beginning when I didn't really understand what to do. Uh, And I see a lot of people doing this as they wake up and if they don't have a an understanding of what to do right now in that, in that moment, or they don't have good, like people who are awake around them to hang out with, they end up feeling really alone. And I, I felt very alone, uh, for big chunks of my life. Um, and I see two different paths that people take. One of them is to attempt to help other people 
um, I say attempt because if you're pressuring someone to, to help them wake up or drop into their bodies. And I say attempt because it's like, you have to respect, I say this a lot, you have to respect the timeline that people are on. Um, I'll go more into that in a minute. But so one thing I see people doing is kind of trying to wake everyone else up around them because they're like, I don't want to be alone in this reality. I, I love this new vibration I'm on. I'm feeling so good and I want everyone else to feel good around me. Why can't they just get it, you know? And the other avenue I see people doing is, um, you know, after a while when they realize that doesn't work uh, to force people to wake up, they start closing their hearts and maybe even closing themselves off to the people in their life. Um, and I see a lot of people going yeah, kind of into like, like in English, we say hermit mode. It's just like where you go off by yourself, either physically or emotionally, and you just you are in solitude a lot, which also doesn't really feel that great because it's like, what's the point of being more aware and remembering why we're here if we're not able to play with people around us? Like we're here as humans, part of humanity, and we are wired for connection. And so... I don't feel like I've tried that also, but I'm such a community person. I love my friends, my chosen family, my partner. And I, you know, those brief times where I kind of just shut down and shut myself off from people were some of the most painful um, that I've had. But I did that because I was so drained from emotionally taking on other people's stuff for them without realizing or, you know, attempting to help them wake up when they didn't actually want to wake up in the moment. So there's a third option. Um, and I'll explain how to do this later, but, but I'll just say it right now, which is, this is what I do. This is what Faraday does. My boyfriend is creating this really yummy, protective energy bubble around yourself and your heart and also physically you know, choosing very carefully who you choose to, s to share your energy with. Um, but why, why do we need to respect the timeline? Because especially if you see someone you love very dearly and they are suffering um, and you can feel them <laughs> that they're suffering, you can feel these negative emotions they have. And you're also like, I don't really want to be around this, you know, but I love them. I want to be around them. So how do I fix or how do I fix this? You know, this is what we go into. We go into like fixing mode. But it's important to onboard ourselves with like the real understanding of the timeline. And why I say respect the timeline is that we are eternal souls. So we will always exist you know, whether in these physical bodies or in the spirit world. And we are here on these physical timelines to drop in and forget who we are in order to remember. And in that time period from forgetting, in between the time period from forgetting to remembering, we are giving ourselves the opportunity to grow and to become more of ourselves and to learn more about who we are because you are pure creators when you when you're creating things from what you don't understand like what I mean is I want to put this in really simple words um, we all will eventually remember the structure of reality we all will eventually allow ourselves to fully drop into our bodies and to connect to each other and to allow ourselves to release these negative beliefs that we have. But people right now, as they are starting to wake up and starting to remember, if they haven't quite fully woken up, the only reason why they are holding on to negative beliefs is because they feel like they are serving them. And they feel like there is something, they feel like this negative belief is protecting them from something worse. And so if you go in and you try and take that negative belief away from them, even though you can tell that they're suffering from it, and you're like, hey, everything's safe, you're okay, we are the creators of our timeline, we can make whatever reality we want, we don't have to live in this prison of negative beliefs anymore. If they're not fully aware of what's happening, like the structure of reality, and they're not fully believing that, they are only going to react 
like a lot of times negatively, or they might try and get on board with what you're saying, but it's not, it's not going to click all the way because they get to choose when they wake up and there might be something on their timeline that they want to learn right now. That's the reason why they are not fully awake or dropped into their bodies. And we get to experience whether we want to wake up in a way that feels really yummy in our bodies And if we want to wake up through pleasure and through connection and like all these positive beliefs, or we can wake up slowly through negative beliefs and through trial and error and hard times. This is a choice that every person has. And we have to honor that person's timeline, every single person that we encounter. We don't get to choose, just like no one chose for us when we woke up. No one came and said, okay, Brittany, bing, now you're going to be awake and fully dropped into your body. You don't get a choice. I just want to play with you. So ding, ding, ding. Like, I wouldn't respond well to that. I don't like it when anyone tells me what to do. Like, I create my own timeline. Um, But so there's this, what I'm trying, I'm mostly talking about people who like if you're like I really want you to wake up and they're like I don't want to or I can't figure this out you can of course I mean do what like I'm doing here in your own way which is sharing with them the structure of reality creating safe spaces and like just like basically bringing the information to them and creating a safe space for them to allow it to drop into their body and to really process but it is their choice what they do with it And we need to honor and respect whatever choice that they make. So what this is what I want to say is like, eventually we will all remember why we are here. Eventually we will all reconnect to, you know, the structure of reality. But maybe they are choosing to wake up slower than you or people around you. And they have a reason for that. And and maybe they don't need to explain it. Maybe it's not even conscious, but that's their choice. And that is their right. So like maybe they're learning something from having these negative beliefs. Who knows? Like I was saying before, like we get to choose whether we want to do it in a positive way. You know, these are all subjective as well because everything has no built-in meaning. We get to choose whether it has positive or negative meanings. But you can also maybe speak to the point of like if it feels good in your body. So like people can choose whether they want it to have it happen where it doesn't feel good in their body. And you're like, I want it to feel good in your body because I can feel your body. Um, but we have to honor and respect that. So that's all being said. We have to respect the timeline of everyone around us. Even if they are someone that is very close to us, people we love very much. I have a whole biological family that I do not speak to at this moment in time in the timeline because they're choosing to not be in my life because they are choosing to have negative beliefs and stay in a religious cult that's very conservative and, you know, suppressing them a lot. And that's their choice. And I, even though, ooh, hold on, my notes just flew away. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, even though I would love for my family to come and play with me and grow this new earth vibration with me, I have to honor, you know, that they are choosing to hold on to negative beliefs. And, I, and I'm saying this because I can feel my family. Like my, my mother and my older sister and I are all very, very close, all growing up. My older sister is two years older than me. And for most of my life, she was my best friend. Um, and so I can really feel her. And I can feel that it doesn't feel good in her body right now where she's at in her life. But I have to honor and respect her timeline. And that's really hard. Um, and for a long time I stayed in the religion that I was raised in even though it didn't feel good in my body because I loved my family so much and I wanted to be in their lives and then I got to the point where it hurt so much for me to stay in this cult and to live a life that wasn't feeling good in my body that I had to choose to respect my own timeline, which means separating with love from them. I love them so much. I send them so much loving energy all the time. And another thing I was just talking to Faraday about yesterday was like, we are still in the middle of the timeline. You know, like the game is still playing out of our lives and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Like I'm manifesting that my mother calls me tomorrow and is like, I love you. Let's hang out. I get it, you know? but I can't put expectations on that. And 
also it helps me to realize that like at some moment whether it's in now in my physical life on this timeline or in the spirit world my mother and I will reconnect and I know this I believe this and I know it's true and this is what gives me so much power in my life and so much like the best way I can describe it is like sigh with relief because I love her and I love my sister so much that I for many years I was in this mode of like trying to save them trying to wake them up because I was like I know that they're in pain I know this religion is so suppressive and it hurts me because I can feel how much it hurts them and so I had to energetically like physically we were already separate for many years but energetically I had to separate with love because I was still sending them so much of my energy but the energy had expectations attached to it because I was really hoping that they would wake up and come hang out with me and so now I send them lots of love and I don't expect anything back and this gives me so much power because they don't get to decide if I love them or not they don't get to decide if I send them loving energy I get to live my timeline and that made me feel so empowered because I was like I get it just like I just I love them I want to have my heart open to them but I need it to be in a way that feels good in my body and this is for me what landed I was like I get to send them so much love and also I get to live a life and a timeline that honors who I am and honors like what what feels good in my body so this is where I got to give you some real talk if this wasn't real already um, you get to decide so you have to respect the timeline of the people around you and like whatever they want to do with their life right you also get to decide if you want to share your energy with them I have so many people messaging me right now it's the transformational age like people are waking up so much around the world and like by very large quantities because I've been watching and waiting for this for my whole life um but consciously very much holding space for this for like the last 10 years and it makes me so happy that people are messaging me and waking up and dropping into their bodies and you know I, I just like this you guys are my tribe you know you're my community even if I haven't met some of you um and what I hear from a lot of them is a lot of pain that like their partners haven't woken up or their family or this and that. And what I want to say to you is, and I've done this, is that you ha get to choose whether you want to be in their lives or how much energy you want to share. Because say you have waken up and you're embodying, you're super empathetic, you're feeling everything and you're like, I just want everyone to be happy. I just want all of us to be sharing this unconditional love and really just be like in these positive beliefs and like create these really beautiful lives together and maybe they're choosing something else you know and you can respect the timeline you can hold space you can share all these beautiful things with them and but you also get to live your life I feel that there's a lot of people in the spiritual community who don't have good boundaries, you know, and this is why I, I, Faraday and I were talking about like how he was reading this meme, watching, reading, looking at this meme that yesterday where it was like religion is like the smaller circle and then the one be bigger than that is spirituality and then the one bigger than that encompassing all of it is consciousness. Um, and so this is why I'm like, when you're just awake, like you realize that there is no spiritual community. We're all just spiritual beings having a human experience. Um, and so it becomes a lot easier because it's not like this or that. It's like we all are it. And we get to decide when we want to wake up to that, when we want to remember that. Um, but just, I'm trying to say this in a way, it's like, just live your life. And I think it's really important to create, like we talk about following our highest excitement, following your joy, following your passion. But what if your partner, what if your close family members, 
what if your close friends in your life are, you know, they have a lot of negative belief systems and that energy is coming into your life a lot. It is your opportunity at that point to decide how much you want to have these people in your life. And I'm saying this delicately because I had to hard cut, like let my family go because they're, they gave me an ultimatum that I had to be in the religion that they, I was raised in or they were going to kick me out of their life. And so I've experienced the very extreme version of this and I don't wish that on anyone. But also... I have been in like partnerships, like with, you know, different men in my life, like boyfriends. I've been in friendships where it just stopped feeling good in my body. Like the more that I remembered and the more I woke up and I had to have some conversations that were hard for me because I loved them so much and I didn't want to hurt them. And also I had to honor myself first. I was in a relationship. I am in a relationship with myself first. And I needed to speak my truth and speak up for who I was and how I wanted to live in my life. And this is why even like the last little while before Faraday and I got together, I was really calling in the whole last year before Faraday and I started dating. I didn't know it was Faraday. I had met him already, but I was just like, but I didn't know it was him. And I was just like, I am manifesting that the person that I'm choosing to spend my life with is awake is understanding how the reality the structure of reality works and also is choosing to have their baseline vibration be joy and love and just enjoying our life on this timeline because i've also been with so many men who are are awake but they're not necessarily in body they're not dropped into their bodies and maybe they haven't had the tools or the resources in order to feel good in their bodies while they're awake. And so, or they were holding some negative beliefs that was just making it so it wasn't fun to live with them or to share my life with them. And I really had to have some real talk with them where I was just like, this doesn't feel good in my body anymore. Like I deserve more than this. I deserve to live my life joyfully. And and I know that I'm still figuring that out, but like I'm actively and consciously figuring this out, you know? So this is not like a, <laughs> I'm not recommending going to your partner or your family and being like, and like going into judgment mode. I'm going, I'm saying you need to really look at where you are in your timeline and choose consciously who you want to have in your life. So there's also certain people in my life that I love very dearly, but I have limited contact with them. And when I do have contact with them, it's like when I'm in a really good place and I know that I can shine my light into their world and bring some love and unconditional love and brightness into the the energy that they have created, which is maybe more negative belief systems. And I'm like doing that because I love them, but I'm also protecting my energy bubble and not spending too much time with them because they eventually the longer you spend with someone your energies merge and there's an interesting um element to this is like if someone is on a lower vibration and someone is on a higher vibration so just it doesn't matter like what the difference between those two are the longer they spend together the more they equalize so again this is not a judgment thing this is just literally a frequency thing we are all energy ooh, made up of matter my video just fell on me. Um, hold on one second. <laughs> just having like fun technical difficulties today. It's great. Um, so this is just something to be really aware of that like you, the longer you hang out with him, someone, the more your energies are going to merge, equalize. And so this is just really important to be aware of. Like, And I feel like not that many people are talking about this. Like this is my, this is something that Faraday and I talk about all the time. And it's more from the perspective of trying to figure it out because like we are still, you know, navigating, um, like we understand how we hold our own energy, but navigating other people's energy 
in a loving way, in a way where we're able to connect because we want connection. We choose connection and choose tribe, but doing it in a way that feels really good in our bodies. So like I was saying before, in order to like, you can't just like go isolate yourself, you know, like say you're in a situation where, you know, you don't have that many people around you who are awake or embodied and you're like, what do I do now? Well, this was me for many years. And what I chose to do was I spent a lot of time in nature because we are all like us and nature. We are all made of the same thing, same matter. Um, and the more that we're connecting with nature, the more we're able to connect to our source energy, our higher self, God, whatever you want to call it. It's like a direct link. And especially I recommend like walking barefoot on the grass or on the beach, like somewhere where you're, you're literally connected, like from your, from your skin to the earth or like go hug a tree. I know all of this sounds really woo woo, but it, it, it's real, and especially when you go and you meditate in nature. So if you're watching this on video, you can see that I'm in the park right now and Ferdy and I come to Tear Garden every single day. And if I don't get my nature time in, I am not able normally to be around other people because this is me. Literally think of yourself as a battery. And when you're in nature, you're recharging your battery. And this really helps me to stay in my center, to remember my joy and to get clear on a lot of things and also to clear my energy field. And then I'm able to go and share my beautiful, joyful, clear energy with people that I love, people that I connect with, the community, uh, organizing retreats, ceremonies, play parties, all of that. But the, the central point of all of this is that I'm grounded and connected to nature every single day. So even if you are alone, like if you're feeling alone where you are in, in on your journey, on your own timeline, nature is always your friend. I did this so much. Even before Faraday and I dated, I was always, when I lived on Copenhagen, I was always at the waterfall every day with my dog Afro. I was always going to the beach. I was always like grounding in nature. And this helped me to clear my energy field and recharge. And it's so amazing. And all you can really do is when you're hanging out with people that maybe are holding these negative beliefs or not quite awake yet to the reality of us on these timelines is the best way to help them wake up is not to preach to them or tell them that they are wrong. That is the worst way. <laughs> Again, no value judgment, but I'm just telling you from experience, it doesn't really work. But I found that is to lead by example. So when people like this happens to Farad and I all the time here in the park, we are just here. We are vibing. We're like doing breath work. We're meditating. I'm doing a little rape. He's like working out on the rings hanging from the tree. We're making podcasts. We're cuddling. We're laughing. We are just sharing our joyful high vibration with the world. And so many people come up to us here in the park and they're like, hi, <laughs> basically Really what they want is to be our friends. They're like, what are you guys doing? Or like, who are you? And just like always some random question. But the real underlying thing is they subconsciously or consciously can recognize that we have this higher, higher, high vibration and that we're joyful and we're like really loving our lives and having these positive belief systems that makes it so that we feel really yummy in our bodies. We're just playing like little kids in the park and this is what I have found. And you see this when you watch like Verity and I social media, like our Insta stories. And this is really who we are. Like we're not putting this on for social. This is like us letting you into a little bit of our life. And we were even joking this morning. We're like, if people really knew like how much this is really us, like can the world handle this? Um, but I think that this is the best way to help people wake up because they're like, wow, that looks like fun. And it looks like they're really enjoying themselves and feeling good in their bodies. And that's like a vibrational thing that people are receiving. And then that can trigger them consciously or subconsciously to start searching for more and listening to our podcasts and like dropping into their bodies and waking up. And this is, it's kind of like seducing people with joy. And I say that 
very seriously. I feel that like this is how I've lived most of my life is not by telling anyone what to do. It's by just having the best time ever. And people are just like, whatever she's on or whatever she's doing, I want part of that. And I'm saying that with me being sober, you know, like just we call it organic ecstasy. It's just like your heart is open. You feel so good and you're just really loving life. And this is the best way to help people around you that you love is just to keep shining bright. And whether you believe in um, any of these teachers that have come through the centuries like Jesus or Muhammad or like any of these people, the, the theme that you'll see in whether it's if you believe it's real or a story, but the theme that you see through all of these is that they shared their light without judgment. They were like preaching unconditional love, always trying to be there for everyone and really hoping that people get it you know and that's all we can do um so i because i understand like like i've i have read so much and learned from so many teachers around the structure of reality and i really believe that we are all made up of energy we are just energy vibrating so quickly that we are formulating into what looks like density, like actual 3D dense objects. But when you, and this is a scientifically proven thing, when you look at us like more closely, we are all made up of atoms vibrating so quickly that it looks like we are put together. But it depends on a vibrational field. If you check the vibration, if you're on a different vibrational field, then a lot of things are, matter is a lot more malleable. And I've studied with someone who, um, does a lot of energy work and I want to share a couple things with you and you can think whatever you want about this but I recommend trying it and seeing how it feels feels in your body because whether you believe it or not the intention behind everything your beliefs create your reality so if you try this and you do it and I, I'm just telling you 100% it's going to help in some way so two things that I really do that help me protect my energy field whenever I remember but especially when I've been out with people and I come home and I'm in my own energy field, I close my eyes and I imagine me being in like this fog, like this kind of mist, fog, cloud. And I set the intention to clear anyone's energy that has attached themselves to me. And I, when I do this, if you try this right now, if I invite you to try this right now. And there will be, in, inside this energy field, what you can set the intention of is when, when someone has, energy has separated from yours, then it shows off in like these kind of like bright, like sparks of lightning within this gray fog. And I do this a lot when I come home and it helps me so much. So just like I surround myself, ener- I close my eyes, surround myself energetically with this like gray fog, cloudiness. And I set the intention to clear anyone's energy who's attached themselves to me. And then I just watch as like lightning goes off all around me. And these are like, you know, energetic cords being cut. This really helps. And when I go out, if I'm going into a situation where I'm going to interact with people, especially people I don't know, I imagine um, a 3D triangle surrounding my whole body, covering all of my chakras. Um, And this is kind of like my invisible energy field. And it's great. I love it. And like I have this pulsing, warm, golden ball of light in my chest where my heart is. And that's like pulsing whenever I set intention and I'm paying attention to it and it's spreading in into and filling up the, the, tr- the pyramid that is surrounding all of my body and all of my chakras. And I have gotten so in tune with this that there's sometimes where I'm not really paying attention to it. And suddenly I feel something trying to get into my energy field within this trying this pyramid. And I'm like, oh, this is energy that I don't want to be around. And it's kind of like a wake up call for me. And I just remove myself from the situation. And this really helps me a lot. So I recommend trying those two things. You can rewind this and listen to it a couple times. 
and just try it for a week and see how it feels. Because for me, this is something that has like been a game changer of me protecting my energy because I choose to keep my heart open and I choose to be this bubble, <laughs> this bubble, this little ball of joyful inner child that is me. And in order to do that, I need to protect myself. This is like a real thing, you know? Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is once I have become aware of all of these things, I'm very careful about who I choose to have in my energy field, especially my inner circle. So, you know, you might meet me at a meetup or at an event that I host and you will be getting the real version of me. Like I'm me wherever I am, whenever I am. But there is another layer like there's so much depth to my reality and there's a whole other layer that I allow myself to open to when I know that I can trust fully that the people who are my close people, my soul tribe, are on the same vibration as me and have their heart open in the same way that I do. And it's kind of like this unfolding where I'm just like, ah, oh, I can just be myself all the way and be super playful and goofy and, you know, give lots of hugs and cuddle and, you know, have lots of caring touch and just, yeah, just melt into, into each other. And I invite you and encourage you to build this for yourself, for people that feel really good in your body, to open your heart to, to, you know, get lots of caring family touch with them, like lots of hugs and just feel safe to be your soft, sensitive soul that we all are, you know, and when you wake up and you're in your body, you realize, oh, wow, we all are this. And most people are carrying so many negative beliefs that they have to close themselves off because they just, they don't trust. But then when you are awake and you're in your body, you realize we can trust. It's just, we need to be mindful of who we're sharing our energy with and also be like protective of our energy. Like I, I choose to protect my energy because I know how precious it is and I know how much my light shines in the world and it's really beautiful and I'm here to serve. I'm here to be this bright light in the world but in order to do that, I need to protect myself and if you're thinking like, wow, but I want to help people wake up like faster or like this and that and it's like, I just feel like I need to help in some way and I will tell you that I have gone very deep into the darkness of this world and it is way better to be in your positive clear grounded energy shining your light living your best life as an example for others to jump on board whenever they want to than to go into the darkness and trying to wake them up and convince them of your reality because if you go into the darkness and you try and change things from the inside out it's only going to bring you down and then you're not going to be there as that bright shining light when they do wake up. You're going to be tired and burnt out and all the things, you know, and have your heart be closed. So make sure that you're protecting your energy. Separate with love from the people that you need to. And put your intention on building your soul tribe of people that you can feel safe to open your heart to. Whew. Okay, this is Brittany Bond signing off. And I invite you to share with me. Any, uh, any way this has resonated with you or any questions you have on Instagram, I love hearing from you guys. Sending you lots of love. Bye.